Like a lot of people want me to have this like, you have to take a stance. Are our Python Jews? And I'm like, you don't. You really don't. <laughs> One of the most common questions that, that I get is, oh, what language should we learn? They're, oh, should I learn Python? Should I learn R? And people get so wrapped up in like, oh, if I learn one, I can't learn the other. No, learning one actually makes it easier for you to learn another one of these languages. Yeah, so, I, I agree with all of that too. I, uh, something I promote is also the same thing, like learn one thing really well and you'll be able to figure out all the other things at some point if you need to. So I know, I think in sports and academia, R is probably more prevalent than it is in industry. I found that most companies that I work with are generally more focused on Python. And then this is a huge broad overarching statement, so it might not be true. But I, I feel like the, at least in football and in some of basketball, R is a lot more prevalent. In baseball, what does that split look like between Python and R? Their community is built around really great engagement, really great community. Uh, and they're really, they're really trying to solve very specific problems. And I think uh, something that sometimes gets lost in on the developer side is you want to fix all the problems that seem like relevant to fix within the, the realms of your package. But a lot of people who are developing in R, specifically these sports libraries that a lot of people tend to use, they are typically trying to solve for functionality problems and not necessarily like structural problems inside of their, their packages. So like, for example, I was helping uh, Ben Baldwin who maintains the NFL Fast R uh, data repo. And I was just bringing up different data issues like, hey, these IDs are off or or something's weird with these seasons or something's weird with this like way that they score things. Uh, and he spent a lot of time like fixing very specific functional things because in the end, like, you know, the one or two missed rows of data, if they're like really erroneous and hard to find the source for, you might just drop them out of Not worth it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, there's like millions of rows, like two rows missing. It's just, it, it doesn't uh, move the needle. But uh, in terms of sports, like when people think about one row, we, especially in a lot of the data that we get from NFL, it's like one play, right? And that one play could be a touchdown or that one play could be the game ending play. So people are really finicky and really like uh, nuanced based when it comes to like solving functional capabilities of data. Uh, you want complete games. And if you don't have a complete game, then you might drop the entire game if you don't have every single play like accounted for because it, it's hard to create uh, the story if you're missing something really big or really important. That's also a generalization, but I would, I would say in general, um, the, the community itself is very loud in terms of like data cleanliness and accuracy. And, and I think that sort of like breathes a lot of life into the, the usability of, of a lot of different R packages and stuff because of the startup cost is so low because they've, the people maintaining the packages are doing such a good job at making the data really out of the box useful and out of the box is very clean already. So that's a long way of me saying like, there definitely is a good amount of R folk in sports analytics, I would say it's not 100% or even majority R. I would say through the different layers of sports analytics, it's not just people who are like solving predictive analytics and doing modeling anymore. You have front end engineers, back end engineers, you have people who are specifically working with database ingestion. You have people who are focused specifically on science communication. Uh, so data analytics as a, as a whole, um, R is maybe a piece of it, but like things that are far more perhaps uh, out there is still Python, I'm guessing. A lot of front-end development happens in Python still, a lot of back-end development pipes all through Python. Um, it's just a very universally loved language between people who aren't specifically people dealing with data. As a person who also does all of their analytics in Python, also find myself find, like having analogous tools that I have in R at times, uh, sometimes packages exist solely in Python that I wish existed in R. Again, they're trying to solve, at least in my opinion, 
like people who learn R for sports and sports analytics, the startup cost is so much lower and therefore like they're able to do cool things so much faster. Um, and, and it's not, I guess it's not a diss on R people either. Like a lot of people want me to have this, like, you have to take a stance, R or Python, choose. And I'm like, you don't, you really don't. <laughs> so, I, I think what makes a, a good data scientist or one of the elements is that you choose the right tool for the task at hand. You know, if you're talking about dimensionality reduction, you're talking about some aspects of normalization. I personally much prefer the R packages there. I think they're easier to work with. Like you can spin them up pretty quickly. Some of the factor analysis stuff for me, that works a lot better because you can see what the inner workings of it better than what goes on in Python. And that's totally fine. Not every project has to be all Python, all R. I mean, Hell, you can do some stuff in Excel if that's the quickest way to get it out and it makes the most sense.